Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the drill down choropleth. Now, a choropleth is a type of map that displays divided areas or regions on that particular visual. As you can see in the screenshot on the right hand side, we're actually looking at individual counties in the United States across a data set. Now, the nice thing about the drill down choropleth is it actually allows you to drill deeper into a hierarchy that you may have. So, say for example, I have a data set that has states in it. It has counties, maybe it has voting precincts in it. You can actually drill in to each individual state, then down to the county, then down to the voting precinct if you wanted to, to be able to see multiple layers, and it could actually do up to three different layers inside the choropleth. You can actually, what you'll need to do when you use the choropleth is find your own shape file, okay? So if you uh, have an idea, you want to use this choropleth map, then you need to make sure that you have a shape file that's available to you. And this is like a, a topology JSON file that you'll use. And by using that uh, JSON file, you'll be able to be able to visualize a shapefile that you have in the choropleth map. Now, again, just to emphasize this, you need a shapefile to be able to use this. If you don't have a shapefile available, then you won't really be able to use this at all. Not to really worry, you can find a lot of shapefiles on the web fairly easily. You can also create your own. But you'll see here, I have a couple that I have pulled actually from the Power BI sample that was given. But you can also download them from the web very easily. You can find your own. This one was developed by Microsoft, but let's uh, go ahead and walk you through where you can find the choropleth and then how you can use it. Now, normally what I would do is I would walk you through the Office Store here. and you, I, We can still do this. If you go to store.office.com, I would go down to Power BI, and you would actually, if you went down here to see more apps, you would find the Drill Down Choropleth. This is a new visual here, so you'll find the Drill Down Choropleth right here. You could also, of course, search it up in the top left. But the great news is that Power BI has actually just released an update that integrates in the Power BI custom visuals into the designer and the desktop application. So you don't even have to go search for them on this Office Store anymore, although you certainly can. But you don't have to go search for them here anymore. You can actually find these visuals directly with inside of the Power BI desktop. So let's go flip over there. I'm not even going to download anything. The only thing I'll mention to you here is if you want to see a sample of what the Coropleth looks like, this is still a good place to go. If you go to the Coropleth here and you go to Add, you can still go here and you can, you can download it or you can download a sample, which is nice to do if you want to see a, 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 an example that's been completed with the Coropleth, you can use that. But in our case, we can actually go back over to the Power BI desktop without downloading it, and we can find that in the new updated July version of, uh, July 2017 version of the Power BI desktop, there's now a way that you can come over here where it says to download from the store, custom visuals from the store, or custom visuals from the file. Custom visuals from the file would mean that you can actually use a file that you've already downloaded. So you made, maybe you designed your own custom visual, or maybe you have an old custom visual that you can't find in that uh, Office library. Then you can actually import them this way. You can still import them the way we've done in the past. If you go over here to import a custom visual, you can go here and you can select to import from store as well. So that's really kind of a new way that you can use to be able to bring in custom visuals. So we're going to go ahead and say that we want to bring in a custom visual from the store. And you can see there's a big list of all the custom visuals that you can look through here if you wanted to. Or in our case, I'm just going to go ahead and search for the one that I know we want, the Coropleth. And you can see that it actually returns back two different visuals, and that's because Coropleth is actually in the description of the second one. Uh, but we're going to focus on the drill down Coropleth. I'll go ahead and add that one. And you'll notice when we select Add that it should appear almost immediately. There we go. Immediately now inside of our visualizations pane. We didn't have to go download it anywhere. We didn't actually download it. It's just kind of brought it into the Power BI desktop for us. And we can start to use it now. So if I hit OK, you can see the Coropleth has now been added right there. And now we can start to use this inside the Power BI desktop. Now, we really haven't talked about what kind of data we're going to use yet. So let's talk about that as after we've kind of discussed the new way that you can import in custom visuals. The data that we're looking at today is going to be all around military veterans. And so we're going to be looking at the different counties where military veterans live. And we're going to visualize that on our map to see exactly where each state has uh, the most veterans. And we can even look then at the, and drill down into the county level and see the counties at which they live as well. So we're going to go ahead and go up to the Get Data section here and select that we want to get data from Excel. And I'm going to go ahead and select that the data that we're going to be pulling in is called, let's see, underneath data, military veterans. That's the example we're going to use for this one. So we'll select military veterans and hit open. That's going to connect us to the data set that we have in that workbook. And then we're going to select the veterans by county spreadsheet, which you can see the data looks like here. It has a list of the states, the counties, and then the number of veterans. 
don't get too hung up on the data itself. I, I pulled this data, but it is a little old, so don't worry if uh, it doesn't match up if you happen to know what the real data looks like. I'll go ahead and hit load to bring this into the Power BI desktop. And this will bring it into our model. And then now we'll bring in the drill down choropleth. And I'm going to go ahead and make it take up the entirety of the screen so we can really get a good view of this. All right, so we have the drill down choropleth in our design surface. Now you can see on the, in the field well here what we can add in. You can add in locations. You can add in values, you can add in tooltips, and you can also add in a legend if you wanted to perhaps look at this with multiple colors that you can set up in the legend area here. And you can identify the metrics that you want to look at. So basically, this is if you had some kind of categorical data you wanted to bring in and analyze, you would use the legend section here. In my case, I don't really have any categorical data. I have locations and a measure. So I would bring in the county, select that. I would bring in the state, and actually I want to push state above county right there. And then let's bring in the veterans as our value that we're looking at. Now, if I had any other fields that I wanted to make as part of the tooltip, then I could actually drop them into this tooltip tip section. And then whenever I hover over a state or a county in my map, it will automatically have that in the little tooltip or a hover over for me. Now, you'll notice here right now that we're not seeing anything inside of our visual. And that's because, like I mentioned in the slide section, we need to have some kind of a some kind of, kind of a, a shape file to be able to actually use this. And so I have a couple shape files here. I'll kind of bring these over here so you can see them. These are going to be what we'll use for our state. So this first one's going to be our state. The second one's going to be our county. This is actually the same shape files that I got from inside the, the uh, sample that was on the office store. But you can go find your own as well if you go search on the web. So for the first uh, one, to be able to define these different layers of our map, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this first shape file that I have. And we're going to go over to the Format Paintbrush over here on the right-hand side. And we're going to go underneath the Shape section. And you'll see there's these different levels. There's Level 1, Level 2, Level 3. You also have things like different projections you can use. Uh, there's a ton of different projections. Let's actually switch to just the US one for now. And then we'll talk about the other ones in a moment. But I'm going to plug in my first level is going to be my State shape file. All right, and you can see as we paste in Level 1 that the shape file automatically takes place. And you can see each of the states being shown in here. And if we wanted to, we can go ahead and paste in level two, which is our county level. And we'll place that in there, and we'll see that it doesn't really change the view of the map because we haven't drilled down to the county level yet, OK? So uh, what you see underneath the projection section here is right now we're looking at a focused US map. But you can change it certainly to any of the other, the other maps that are available that are in here, the different projections. Uh, this one tried to show a more accurate view of what the states look like. You have a Mercator projection, which is actually anticipating you have the full United States here, as well as the rest of the world. And in this case, we only have the United States, so it's a big open area here for the rest of the world. You could use this one and actually zoom in. There's some zoom capabilities. You could also use some of the other ones here just to show you what they look like, more of a, a globe look here to it. And then this is the last one. So clearly, the one that makes sense here is probably the one that's focused in on the US uh, view here. And you'll notice also in the same section underneath Shape, there's these IDs. There's IDs for level one, IDs for level two, IDs for level three. Basically, the idea behind these IDs is if you're using a shapefile that doesn't necessarily have a connection between the location data point and the actual value coming from your data set, you might have to bring in a separate file that maps those together, that maps, uh, for example, maps Wyoming to a particular number or location or a spot on the map. And in this case, our shapefiles already have that, so we don't need to really worry about anything in there. But that's what the IDs make available to you. Okay. Uh, before we talk about the other things underneath the format paintbrush, let's talk about a little a bit of interaction here within the map. In interaction with the map here, you can certainly use and click on values in here. So if I click on California, for example, it'll zoom me over to California. Uh, if I had any other visuals on this report, it would also do cross highlighting or cross filtering where it would actually filter down the other object based on what I've selected here. Um, you can select different states and it'll view closer into the, each of those states if you wanted to. You can also select it again to zoom back out. So that's kind of how you would use this map to be able to filter something else. So just to kind of get a peek at what that would look like if I had brought in another, let's say, just a plain table, for example. And I brought in the states and, or how about this? Let's bring in the counties and the veterans. And let's make that into a table again. Now, if I were to select, uh, for example, California, you'd see that it would filter just down to the California counties in this case. Okay, so that's kind of the point there is it's letting me do some cross highlighting so I can just see what I have selected inside of that particular selection on the map. All right, so that's one nice thing that you can do. You also have, keep in mind though, that this is a drill down map. So the choropleth here is a drill down choropleth. And so what we can do is we can select the different items that we have up top for doing drill down capabilities. 
and we can select and interact with them. So for example, let's say rather than seeing all the states, I actually wanted to see all the counties. If I wanted to see all the counties, I could select this option up here that says go to the next level. And rather than showing the states, it'll actually show all the counties. And I can see, for example, individual counties from a full state view, or full country view here, really. And then I can go drill in individual counties if I wanted to. Okay. Now, there's some other capabilities here. If I wanted to, I can drill back up. If I hit the drill, hit the drill up button, that'll take me back to the state level. And you could also do things like this. If I selected that I want to expand all down to one level, I would select that and it would actually take me to the first state in my list. In this case, it would take me to Alabama here and it would focus in on just that one state. So probably not really what I want to do for this example. But what we can do instead, remember there's two interactions here. If I were to select a state, it would do filtering. So it's filtered. But if I select a state after I select this option in the top right that turns on drill down, instead of actually filtering, it will take me down to the state and show me all the different counties within that state. So now it's not only is it filtered, but it's also only showing the counties in here uh, for that one state. So using this drill down option up in the top right, our drill mode option, that allows you to filter and drill down at the same time here. Okay. All right. So let's take a step back. Let's drill back up. So that's some of the interaction that you have with inside of the Corpleth map here is it gives you the capability not only to do some drill interaction. In fact, that drill interaction is very similar if we had done this on something like a column chart, but it gives you that capability with inside of the map. A few of the other things that we have here within the format paintbrush section is you can change things like the data colors. Just kind of notice here a few of the things that you'll notice with the data colors is you might notice that it uh, looks like it's actually rolling up the max value and the min value based on what it sees in the map, and that is correct. It actually is rolling up all of the max values for the states. So the top state value I have is California. You can see that matches what I have whenever I hover over California. And if I were to drill down to the next level, you'll notice it'll go and it'll actually change my max values to the max value I have for the most in one county, which is obviously lower than what it would be when it was aggregated up to the state level. So that's kind of a nice interaction here. You can see that it actually does that for you. But if you wanted to overwrite the max and min values or even the colors that are being used, you can certainly come over here underneath the format paintbrush underneath data colors and change the colors that are being used for the values shown on the Corepleth map. All right, let's zoom back up. We talked about the shape section earlier. You can also change, though, the default colors. And the default colors have to do with like things like the borders between each of the states. Let's uh, say you wanted to change the border color, for example. Like right now it's black, and maybe you wanted it to be something like, uh, let's say, a purple, just for uh, kicks and giggles here. You could uh, up the size of that border, and you can see that border size uh, emphasized a little bit more, and you're actually able to see here it visualized on the map, a much thicker border. You can reset that if you wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and reset that and just send it back to the black, black uh, interaction. Underneath the zoom section, you have a couple things that you can do with zooming. You can turn on auto zooming, which means whenever you were maybe perhaps using another filter on the map, it would auto zoom in a certain areas on the map. So uh, maybe a slicer I have over here, if I select a state, it would zoom into that particular state. You can also turn on things like uh, turn off, for example, selection zoom. Selection zoom is turned on by default. Remember what selection zoom did was whenever I selected a state, it zoomed into that state. Well, if I don't want it to do that, if I don't want it to actually zoom into that state, I can turn that capability off. And I can still select states and have cross filtering or cross highlighting, but it's not actually going to zoom into those individual states. Then the last one here, I'm going to turn that back on. I actually like that feature. The last option here is manual zoom. If you turn on manual zoom, this is simply going to allow you to use the cursor on or the scroll bar on your mouse to zoom in into certain areas on the map. Just by putting your uh, mouse on the area and using the scroll bar, you can zoom in into certain areas with that manual zoom. So that's some nice capabilities you can add or maybe not add, depending on what you want your users to be able to have the capabilities to do. Outside of that, you have all the standard kinds of visuals where you can change the title. Maybe you don't want to have a title at all because it's kind of straightforward on what you're seeing here. You can change the background color if you wanted to, uh, lock the aspect ratio. You can certainly do things like that inside of the Corepleth map. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's a really interesting visual. I quite enjoy it. I like the capability of being able to zoom in, go drill down into individual counties like we have the ability to do here. And I uh, look forward to showing you some of our uh, next visuals in our next module.